All right, this is a uh, little briefing about how to use CPS clicker system. First of all, you want to find the CPS icon on your computer and double click that. Um, if it hasn't been installed yet, you may put in a request to 5 Star to install this system. All right, once you have it uh, installed, you'll have to go through a process where you put in your classes and it'll ask you for your email address and what school you work for and um, some other little questions. Then the first thing you have to do is prepare a class. So in order to prepare a class, you're going to go to prepare this tab up top and then you're going to go to classes and students and you'll hit new and first you'll start by hitting class. And again, it'll ask you for some information. Ours is K-12. I'll hit next. And you can put in your class name, your course number. You can put in as much of this information as you would like, uh, but you must fill in the required area. So for this one, I'm just going to put example. <clears throat> and I'll hit next. Next. Congratulations. If you want to create several classes, as you can see I've already done, you would click this and you can go through and put in another class. Okay. Once you have your classes in, so I've got science, one, two, three, math, one, four, five, six. I've got a homeroom. Uh, once you have your classes in, though, what you need to do is add students to the class. Okay. So in that class, just a minute, you're going to add a student and you can keep adding students just by hitting enter 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 put in as many students as you need 28 however many is in the class I usually will add one or two extras um, just in case one of the clickers doesn't work then a student can transfer over to that one uh, but if you don't have like 30 students in the class and uh, you, you only have 28 and somebody's clicker isn't working, then it won't allow you to use one of those other clickers unless you add another student in that class. So, moving back. Okay, when I'm ready to engage then, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, use this sample class um, where I came, came up with just some kind of fake names. You can put in the name, the first name, the last name, and so on <clears throat> for all of your students. And they'll be assigned a clicker. Then you're going to go over to lessons and assessments. Uh, from here, you got to create some sort of lesson, and you can import them by using this if you have something through exam view, um, some type of exam view test. You can actually import questions or whatever it is. What I like to do is just go to engage, and when you click on engage, you can put in some type of lesson. Okay, so right now we see the lesson energy and transformations, energy transformations. So I would sit, put that lesson in and click on OK. Now this allows me to, if I want to go through like the online textbook has some different questions on the assessments. And what I can do, if you have smart technology, you can take a picture of that. If you don't, you can just zoom on, zoom in on the question with your online text and ask it verbally and allow the students then to key in the answer here. So <clears throat> we ask the question, which is not a form of potential energy, and our students key in. When they're keying in, this will change color so they know if their number has keyed in, okay, or if it has not. Uh, if you notice a red color coming up and an X, that means they chose an answer that was not a choice. Okay, there's only A through D. Um, if it comes up as <clears throat> green, that means they just chose the same answer twice. And if it turns yellow, that means they decided to change their answer from one answer to another answer. Okay, in this case then at the end you can either set a timer and push play or at the end you can just push end okay and usually a graph will pop up I'm gonna do another example uh, notice I'm picking only choices A through D if I only had three choices I would choose this one if I only had two I could choose this and if you had several uh, more choices you could choose something like this A through H 
okay? But I'm choosing A through D. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and key in some answers with uh, the various clickers here. Okay, and now we can see they're finished, but 16 and 17 have not answered yet. Or neither has 12. So I'm going to hit end, but I may wait for those two, two or three students to answer if it were an actual class. When I hit end, we can then see if I put my mouse over the percentage, and you can change the type of chart or graph that you're using. I like the circle graph because it shows the percent of students that chose the answer. But we can see that the correct answer here was, I think it was D. Um, so the majority of students chose D, but we had two that chose C. And then we can look over that and say, well, why do you think they chose chemical here? And ask the students to try to figure out what, what they were thinking when they chose that incorrect answer. That's just one way to use clickers and how to set everything up. Uh, after you're done, you can hit the X. You can also take attendance this way. But you hit the X again, and when you want to check your data, you go to Report. You click on that lesson, and you go to... Uh, there are several different reports, but I usually use Instructor Summary, which tells you the percents of each student. And you can preview that, and it'll show you the students that got it correct, the students that missed it, and unless you have an unexpected error like this one right here. So that is your lesson on getting set up with CPS clickers. I hope it helped you out.